Hello, I'm Edward Court, and this is the fifth tutorial in using Woodwind Instrument Designer software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this tutorial, we'll discuss the tuning representation used by the program. WI Designer performs two primary user operations. The first is evaluating the tuning of an instrument. What geometry parameters affect that tuning, uh, what fingering patterns affect that tuning, kind of a, a what-if scenario. Um, the second primary operation is the design of that instrument. The tuning represent, representation is integral in both of these operations, and so we'll briefly go through it. We'll talk about the uses of the tuning, how to read a tuning, how to edit it, how to read the resulting tuning table that comes from evaluating an instrument, and then we'll go through, through some, some scenarios um, so that we can see how to modify an instrument and see assess what the effect that has on the tuning, modifying, fingering, and then we'll talk about uh, weights um, in a couple of scenarios. So that said, let's get get into the program. Here is here is Woodwind Instrument Designer, and let's open a tuning file. I'll bring up one from the sample files that come with the, the software. And we go into tuning. Let's bring up an, an A4 uh, tuning. And we can see it's for a six hole flute. It's equal temperament and it uses the fingering pattern that I use for my flute. So let's see what it looks like. It has a name, and it's, it's required that it's tuning has a name. Um, a description, which is nice. You saw that I looked at that description before I opened the file. And then a fingering list. A fingering list is a list of, of note names, and we'll see what you can do with those note names. Um, an associated frequency and a fingering pattern that you use to play that particular note. And fourthly, a weight, which we'll discuss in, in a minute. Um, so which parts of this representation can you edit? Well, you can edit all of it. You can change the name. Um, Suppose I just wanted to name this Do. Um, uh, there is no, no constraints on what you name the notes. Um, I kind of like sci scientific notation, which talks about the note name, the diatonic note name, and the octave. It's frequency in hertz. Um, this is, is clearly a, a modern concert tuned scale with A equal four, 440 hertz. Um, you on the fly here uh, can change that. Uh, we can change it to 432 right here and leave the others the same or change them, um, assuming that you have some basis for changing them. Let's put it back to where, where it was. And fingering, so when a, a f this is a six-hole flute, mouthpiece at the top. Um, so this is, in, in NAF notation, this is hole six and this is hole one. Uh, black hole means it's covered, so this is the lowest note. Um, and now it's, now it's uncovered, so you can change um, the fingering pattern on the fly. You don't have to save it to use it. Uh, you can save it on the fly. Um, let's bring up a, an instrument and see how we use that. So, again, one of the samples that came with the program and 
three quarter inch bore um, says that it will make an on A4 flute pretty well in with a bore ratio of 18 to 1 so let's open that and to assess the tuning of that instrument um, it's this first tool button calculate instrument tuning table or in the tools um, calculate tuning. The program will tell you if you've opened up um, an instrument file that has a different number of finger holes than the tuning file. It doesn't know how to deal with that. So let's just push the button and in a very short period of time it, it gave us a tuning this instrument and so this is the tuning table let's see how you read it expected notes are the notes that were in the tuning file so it's comparing um, what it calculated for that instrument um, to the notes that were in the in the tuning file so 440 523 and so forth are these numbers and this is what it found for those notes and the note name that came from that this this tuning file and the results the results are in deviations from the expected um, in cents you can see that I made this instrument um, I optimized it for just being in tune for the pentatonic minor notes which are all the notes in in A minor that have no accidental so A C D E F G and A the octave and I did not optimize it for anything above the octave um, we'll do that in another tutorial on optimization so you can see how to read this um, in fact let's let's look at it a little differently let's use these weights so weights are used in two different places if a weight is greater than zero in this scenario it's used to interpret it's it says you're you want to see that that note represented in the tuning table um, if it's zero or less, um, you want to ignore it. In optimization, the absolute value of that weight is used to weight um, how that note is used. We'll get into that in a, a later tutorial. So let's just select those notes that are in the pentatonic minor scale. So um, as I said, those without an accidental are in the pentatonic minor in the key of A minor. So we just enter zero for notes that we don't want to look at. And I'm just hitting um, the digit zero and using arrow keys to, to scroll down uh, to the next cell. And let's not include any of the second octave notes. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, uh, the tuning table file is, n is not live after it's generated, so we can just leave it up, and we still have that tuning file represented. We don't have to do a save in order to use the changes, um, and we hit the tuning. Now we just have the pentatonic minor notes, A, C, D, E, F actually that's that's not in the pentatonic minor but it is in the minor scale uh, G and A and they're all perfectly in tune so how, how you read these numbers let's look at the ones that aren't all perfect um, this is the deviation from expected so it's 10 cents sharp from what you wanted um, for the, the C sharp. If you add up all the deviations plus and minus, um, that is the net error. So it just shows you in general, is it balanced around being um, 
in tune with about half of the deviation being sharp and half the deviation being flat. This is pretty close. Um, and then the average deviation per note. So if you added all these up and divided by the um, however many notes, I think there's 16 notes here, 15 notes here, um, that's how, how off those notes are. For the, just the minor notes, um, the deviation is zero. So pretty straightforward in, in generating um, this tuning evaluation and in interpreting it. It's supposed to be easy. Now let's see how to use it in, in evaluating changes in an instrument. So we're again going to use the same, same instrument and let's put back all the other notes. So again I'm just going to type one and use the arrow keys. Now we're using all the notes again. Let's confirm that we actually are. And we'll do a tuning again. And line it up with the other one. Yep, same number of rows, everything's good. So let's ask, let's ask a simple question about flute geometry. So let's bring up the flute. And here's a parameter that you don't see in in NA Flutamat, um, but is used here. It's the termination flange diameter, um, which I explained in a prior tutorial, is essentially uh, a measure of how thick the walls are at the, at the end, at the foot of the flute. Um, forms a flange. In this case, I have a square flange um, the, the inside bore diameter is three quarters of an inch. This is essentially the outside bore diameter. It's one and an eighth inch. I typically make my flutes uh, with three sixteenths inch walls and this represents that, that value. So again, if we, if we do the tuning, we see that, that the fundamental note is perfectly in tune. Now let's change that flange diameter. Suppose we made it sharp, and so its flange was the same as the inner bore diameter. So 0.75. Enter a number, uh, change focus so it's entered, and let's do the tuning again and see what effect that has on the tuning, which notes it changes. So what that says, let's line these up so we can see them easily, is that if we had no flange for that flute, the bottom note is changed. Let's make it easy to see. And you notice that I can move the columns around. I can resize them um, to, to make a view that, that I like. Um, now the A, A4, the fundamental, the lowest note, um, is 4.4 cents sharp compared to what it was when it had um, a flange that was 3 eighths larger than the inner, inner bore diameter. So it, it made um, it, it sharp without a flange. What if we had a big flange? Hey, let's make, make it as big as we like. Let's make it 5 inches. and see what effect that has. And now instead of being uh, sharp, it's flat. But it's not flat by, by much. It's flat by about three and a half cents, that value here. So tuning, uh, changing that flange diameter um, from as small as we can make it, uh, which made it sharp by four and a half cents, to pretty much as large as, as, as is insane, um, which made it flat by three and a half cents, we get to have a total range there of about eight cents. So flanges on the Native American flute geometry in general aren't a big deal. 
but this is, is a good illustration of how we can look at any of the parameters um, in an instrument representation and see what effect they have on the tuning. Let's put it back to what we had before. Oh, and also, um, in its worst case scenario, the, the, the zero flange, um, where, where the flange diameter was the same as the inner diameter, the first note changed by 4.4 cents. The next note up on the flute only changed about a quarter of that. The next note up on the flute only changed about a third of that. So you can see that changes at the bottom of the flute don't propagate very far up the tuning table. So that's the first easy scenario that we can play with. Let's put it back to what, what it was. 1.125. Uh, confirm that we got it back to perfect tuning, and we did for that note. Let's try one other change. Um, let's look at the, the second octave tuning, and the worst note in that in the whole tuning scale for this flute is um, the B5, the second octave. Uh, it's the the major second, major ninth um, for this, this flute. Let's see what would happen if we change the fingering. So that main, major ninth is now currently played, so that's the B5 that we looked at, with the bottom four holes closed, the top two open. We want to make it sharper, so let's open a hole. Um, let's open this one and see what the effect. Again, I've done no saves. I'm using this on the fly. And so now we went from 38 cents um, flat to 40 cents sharp. So neither of those, those tunings are, uh, neither of those fingerings are going to help us in the in the tuning. But we could mess around and, and we could change positions of holes and see if those help. Um, that's what the optimizer section is for, so we won't, won't really, really fight that. One thing that we might do, and we won't do it here, I'll do it in a later tutorial, is look at the effect of undercutting for a hole, which is essentially if we undercut on the south side of the hole, it's slightly moving the hole down and so we could go into a into a flute and change the whole position instead of being 6.8 inches um, make it 6.9 inches so we've undercut it um, pretty dramatically actually and, and see what effect that has on the two notes typically they're involved um, in changing the position or diameter of that hole so again, scenarios that you would use um, in evaluating instruments with a tuning table. And as far as weights being greater than one, um, I think I'll hold off on that because it really is a scenario that's used in optimization. I can, I can make these weights as large as I want, so that part is, is useful to know. Let's take that, um, that B4, put it back to where it was, and change this to 100. So let's get rid of this one because we changed the, two, the fingering back to when it wa what it was. And you can see that the tuning table hasn't changed at all. So at least as far as notes showing up and being used for evaluating the tuning of an instrument, um, the only two values um, used in the weight table are 
is it zero or less or is it one or more and if it's greater than zero it's used in the tuning table and if it's zero or less it's not okay I think that I have talked about this is a very sh short tutorial for me I've talked about everything that I want to talk about as far as the tuning representation right now. There will be a subsequent tutorial that goes into the tuning wizard which lets you in a, a structured fashion create tuning representations um, based upon standard uh, note symbols, standard frequencies, um, or temperaments um, and where you can reuse your fingerings use other fingerings persist all the little pieces and build them up very rationally um, that'll be a longer tutorial this is is just the, the use of that tuning table tuning representation in the two scenarios and again the URLs that you might find useful the Java download the release pace page for WI Designer, issue, issues page where you can post issues or see what other issues users have, have found, um, the tutorial page where this will be referenced as well, please look at that often, and uh, the wiki page which has a using WI Designer and links to other interesting facets. So for now, have a good day.